Diversity Diversity is one of the foundations of the strategy of the great work. In our introductory video, we introduced the other foundations of the strategy. The Cosmic Egg, Contrast, Aggregates, and here we provided the concept of aggregation, the conscious aggregate, the types of aggregation, and archetypes. The remaining foundations are diversity, which we cover here, and reuse. And we will explain diversity by using quotes from those who understood. John Lame Deer and Richard Erdos. Lame Deer seeker of visions, even animals of the same kind, two deer, two owls, will behave differently from each other. The leaves of one plant, on the same stem, none is exactly alike. On all the earth, there is not one leaf that is exactly like another. The Great Spirit likes it that way. He only sketches out the path of life, roughly, for all the creatures on earth, shows them where to go, where to arrive at, but leaves them to find their own way to get there. He wants them to act independently, according to their nature, to the urges in each of them. If Wakantaka likes the plants, the animals, even little mice and bugs, to do this, how much more will he abhor people being alike, doing the same thing, getting up at the same time, putting on the same kind of store-bought clothes, riding the same subway, working in the same office, at the same job, with their eyes on the same clock, and worst of all, thinking alike all the time. We started something, Ingrid. Uh -huh. <laughs> Have we got a photograph of them to show? Thank <laughs> 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 All creatures exist for a purpose. Even an ant knows what that purpose is. Only human beings have come to a point where they no longer know why they exist. They don't use their minds and they have forgotten the secret knowledge of their bodies, their senses or their dreams. They don't use the knowledge the Spirit has put into every one of them. They are not even aware of this, and so they stumble along blindly, on the road to nowhere. A paved highway, which they themselves bulldoze and make smooth, 
so that they can get faster to the big empty hole which they'll find at the end, waiting to swallow them up. It's a quick, comfortable superhighway, but I know where it leads to. I have seen it. I've been there in my vision and it makes me shudder to think about it. Lyle Watson, Lightning Bird There is a species of African bird that stands apart from all others. Science knows it as Scopus umbretta, the hammercock, and places it in a family of its own, midway between the stalks and the herons. There is a little of each in its anatomy, but nothing of either in its behaviour. It builds a nest chamber about the size of a football, and then encloses this in a superstructure big enough to fill an entire tree. Far too large to be accounted for in terms of survival value alone, this construction is more in the nature of a magnificent gesture, an act of deliberate defiance against the petty restrictions of natural selection. People in Africa most often see the bird standing in pools of water, staring intently at its reflection. It is, they say, the one who knows the unknown, who is familiar with the things that vanish when you look directly at them. It is the one who stands alone, who cannot be pointed at, but who points out wizards and has access to power. Pursued by the wind and the rain, this bird is known as a rainmaker, as a herald of the thunderstorm. It is Mazio Noki, the lightning bird. Olaf Stapleton, star maker. In order that all the potentialities of the spirit should be fulfilled, they said that there must be a far greater diversity of world types and thousands of worlds of each type. Only a very much greater community could explore all the regions of being. Diversity and multiplicity of worlds was as necessary on the galactic plane as diversity and multiplicity of individuals on the world plane and diversity and multiplicity of nerve cells in the individual plane. Per Teilhard de Shada, Phenomenon of Man The entire spectrum of life, the universe of the insects, whose reliable species are counted in tens of thousands, by the mollusks, thousands more, inexhaustibly variegated in their marblings and their convolutions. By the fishes, unexpected, capricious and as prettily marked as butterflies. By the birds, hardly less extravagant of every form, feather and beak. By the antelopes of every coat, carriage and diadem and so on, and so on. And for each word which brings to our minds a dozen manageable forms, what multiplicity, what impetus, what effervescence. And to think that all we see are merely survivors. D.T. Suzuki, Trisna. Buddhist philosophy considers Trisna or Tana the first principle of making things come into existence. In the beginning there is Trisna. It wills to have a form in order to express itself, which means to assert itself. In other words, 
When it asserts itself, it takes form. As Trisna is inexhaustible, the forms it takes are infinitely varied. Trisna wants to see, and we have eyes. It wants to hear, and we have ears. It wants to jump, and we have the deer, the rabbit, and other animals of this order. It wants to fly, and we have birds of all kinds. It wants to swim, and we have fish, wherever there are waters. It wants to bloom, and we have flowers. It wants to shine, and we have stars. Trisna creates a world of infinite diversities. It will never exhaust itself. Henry Wordsworth Longfellow From the poems of Longfellow Printed about 1875 From the Builders All are architects of fate Working in these walls of time Some with massive deeds and great Some with ornaments of rhyme Nothing useless is or low, each thing in its place is best. And what seems but idle show, strengthens and supports the rest. William Butler Yeats, Anima Mundi One night I heard a voice that said, The love of God for every human soul is infinite. For every human soul is unique. No other can satisfy the same need in God. <laughs>